Okay, we're going to continue working with artwork. And in the previous video, we looked at creating um, a backdrop from a bitmap and then drawing the shapes ourselves. This time, we're going to take a look at using Auto Trace. So I'm going to go ahead and choose New Design. I'll leave all the embroidery techniques turned on and say Next. Select a color of background and say Next. Now it automatically has the hearts image uh, selected, but if it didn't, I would simply click on this button, browse through my computer to find, you know, the image wherever I've saved it to, and then select it and say open. Now when I say next, I'm given the option of what should the software do with this image. And last time we just simply opened it as a backdrop, which really then it does nothing other than put that bitmap on your screen and allow you to work with it. This time, we're going to choose Trace and say Next. And now we get a new kind of dialogue window that enables us to make some changes. Um, so we, first of all, there's some, I guess, choices here. If I want to, I can take control of scaling the image, so the size, um, accuracy, so how closely do I want the software to follow the shapes that it sees, limit the number of colors, and tell it to not use or use a background. And so you'll see here that it's, you know, if I take a look at what it's done, I can see that there are you know, several colors that are being sort of created here. It's got 146 shapes and it looks to me like it's creating a lot of different shades of colors. And I could go ahead and trace this and see what it does. But I think I'm more likely wanting to make just one color hearts and not having the lightest color, the medium red color, another red color, a different red color, a different red color. You know, I'm not sure how many reds I even have in my collection. Well, that's not true. I'm a bit of a thread addict. I have lots of shades of red. I could probably handle that. But let's just say I don't, and I only want it to be, you know, kind of like just a single color design. Well, I can take control of that with the color limit. So I could tell this, no, instead of an unlimited number of shades, let's just make it two. So I'll basically get red and white. There, and so what's, can you see what it's done? It updated itself. Now it's got six shapes. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five hearts and a white background, which is great. And then I'll just say trace. And you can see now that it's got two colors of, again, I'm using simple cut. So I have, it's converting them into brushes instead of thread, but that's fine. We could always, you know, change them later. So anyway, I'm going to click finish. And here we have our shapes on our screen and notice they've already been kind of digitized for us. The shapes are all drawn and ready to go. Yes, they're filled in with paint, but if I'd rather, you know, use an applique to fill in this heart, I could choose applique, no problem. You know, if you want your applique to have a, a black outline in a applique stitch, you know, you can choose that. And so that's kind of the real benefit of doing auto trace. It'll create shapes from your artwork for you. And so it's really a little bit about taking control of that color reduction. Some images, you know, this is a fairly straightforward image in terms of the actual shapes. So it does a very successful result. And if you find that you're just getting more challenging artwork and the software's not able to interpret the shapes you want, that's when you choose the you know, load artwork as backdrop option. And then you can just draw the shapes as you see them. But for an image like this, Auto Trace works awesome. And you can quickly get some hearts. And, you know, depending on what version of the software you have, you'll have the option of net fill or applique, um, you know, all the paint fills. But, and of course, crystal fill, we could, you know, these hearts could be filled in with crystals too. Um, yeah, now another thing while I'm here, Notice that I've created some crystals and, you know, they're kind of hard to see. You can to choose the view drop down menu and then choose to hide your backdrop. You know, now that you're done using, you don't really need the backdrop anymore. We've created our design. I'd probably want to get rid of that white piece, right? Because I didn't really want to stitch that. So we'll remove that. So now you can see what's really left. The, uh, the backdrop's still there. I could turn it on at any time. View, backdrop. I could put it below the embroidery which makes it a little bit easier to see your embroidery on top of your backdrop. I could put it above the embroidery. View, sorry, backdrop. Uh, there's washed out or above. And so it really, there's different times when you choose different ones. If you want the 
in sort of crystals and embroidery to be more prevalent, put the artwork underneath. Sometimes you're like, hey, that artwork's just, I don't need it anymore, and I'm just going to hide it. And now I can see my artwork. I can see my crystals a little better. I can select them and say, well, maybe circular fill would look good in this case or whatever. So that's working with backdrops. And what we'll do now is just reset and come back and look at using, um, again, a bitmap image and just looking at converting into photo paint.